Today, I'm gonna give you five interviewer red flags. If an interviewer brings something like this up, you know to run the other way. You spent all this time looking for a job, you finally got a call back, you nailed the phone screen, and now you've been invited to a face-to-face -face or a Zoom call with the employer. So here's five things that you need to watch out for. Red flags on the employer side. And if you see one of these red flags, you might not want to take that job. Before we start this, if you're not subscribed, please like, please subscribe, and please share this with your buddies or developers who want to get a good job. Red flag number one disorganized interview process. Hi, so bit of a change. Um, so I know you're supposed to interview Sharon, but Sharon's on a long-term sick leave and Carl's in her place, but Carl only works every other odd number day when there's an odd number of days in an even month. Now, if the even numbered month ends in an odd number day, he's here between 12 and three. Um, so I was gonna have you talk to Hatesh, but Hatesh is down at headquarters ever since there was that fire so um i'll find someone to interview you okay so that's an extreme example but if you show up for an interview and everyone's disorganized they can't find the people who are supposed to interview you or they don't know where they're supposed to be then you might want to reconsider working there now don't get me wrong there's going to be hiccups there might be an emergency and someone might have to leave the meeting with you or the conference room might get double booked things like this happen at work but if it seems like it's part of the culture that there's extreme disorganization, you probably don't want to work at that company. Red flag number two, trash talking and negativity. You know, the last person who held this job, <laughs> real idiot, couldn't code to save his life. Screwed up our whole system so you'll be dealing with what he had to do. Let me tell you something, he smelled as well. If sea salt and vinegar chips were a person, it would look like him. Yeah, you got a pretty interesting resume. You seem like a highly motivated person. Let me tell you something. Every single dead body on Mount Everest was once a highly motivated person, too. If the interviewer has a negative attitude or he trash talks his own company, that might be a sign that you don't want to work there. Now, there's a big difference between trash talking the company and being honest and candid about the challenges of the job. If you know you're going into a difficult position, the guy just might want to say up front, hey, this is a difficult position or we have a very difficult customer and there's a lot of challenges in this. That might be totally fine. But you know when a guy is trash talking and you know when a guy is being honest. If someone's trash talking their own workplace, you don't want to work there. The third red flag is rude, offensive, or inappropriate behavior. It says that you're president of the Delta Zeta sorority. Nice. When I was in school, Delta Zetas were the hottest bunch of functioning alcoholics on campus. <laughs> they didn't teach you how to wear heels? If someone's being rude or inappropriate during the interview process, how the heck are they going to treat you when they're giving you money every two weeks? And one thing to remember, at least here in America, you can't be asked about your age, your race, your marital status, whether you have children. So keep that in mind if the interviewer starts getting a little too personal. Which brings us to red flag number four, the classic bait and switch. So uh, I see there's a lot of C-sharp on your resume. Uh, just know that this job is a C-sharp developer, but it's actually 10% C-sharp, 50% Python, 50% MongoDB, 50% MATLAB, and 100% Backbone.js. Oh, and 50% and Help Desk and all of their duties as assigned. So if the job description doesn't actually match what you're interviewing for, consider that a red flag. The company may be trying to find someone and they can't find anybody. And so they've resorted to trying to trick someone who's desperate into working for them. And be wary of companies that say a position is 50% help desk and 50% coding. Here's why. Help desk is always gonna take the majority of your time because if you aren't working the help desk, your boss is gonna know about it immediately. So if you're doing 60% help desk, you're still gonna be expected to hit your deadlines and do 50% programming. This is how you end up on a performance improvement plan, even though you've been working your butt off. So if a company says 50% help desk and 50% coding, be very, very wary of that company. And finally, red flag number five. We pride ourselves on wearing many hats here. So this is a red flag because sometimes companies need an entire IT team, but they only have the budget for a junior developer. So those are the red flags. Good luck on your next interview. <laughs>